1979 in Manhattan, New York, Claire Catherine Danes knew from an early age she wanted to perform. With the support of her artsy parents, her mum having worked as a painter and her father a photographer, at only four she began dance lessons and by nine enrolled in acting classes at the prestigious Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute. By age 11 she began landing bit roles on TV and film, going on to study at the New York Professional Performing Arts School and at just 13 she travelled to LA hoping to be cast in Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List. In a twist of fate, while awaiting Spielberg's decision, producers of a new TV show called My So-Called Life offered Claire the part of angst-ridden teenager Angela Chase, which she gladly accepted. Soon after, Spielberg offered her the part in Schindler's List, but she declined because they weren't willing to school her in Poland where the movie was to be filmed. The decision paid off. Premiering in 1994, My So-Called Life only lasted a couple of seasons, but attracted a cult following and critical praise. At just 15 years of age, Claire was nominated for an Emmy and won a Golden Globe for her work. Meanwhile, I have to write my paper tomorrow on the Reformation. <laughs> Claire was now on Hollywood's radar as the next big thing. While starring in My So-Called Life, she seamlessly made the transition to film, starring in Gillian Armstrong's adaptation of the classic Little Women. The film was a success and allowed Danes to work with well-respected actors Susan Sarandon and Gabrielle Byrne, as well as another former child actor, Winona Ryder, who she looked up to. She just sort of graduated from being the, the teen child actor and, and she turned into a, a grown-up one. Um, and so she was really teaching me what she went through and to have a little bit of perspective on this business. You can get so wrapped up in this whirlwind that it's very difficult to step back and, and uh, sort of judge things with a, you know, an, an appropriate <laughs> head. Because <laughs> uh, hopefully we can, have, we can maintain some humor about it all. Continuing to develop her craft, she appeared in How to Make an American Quilt, alongside an impressive cast including Anne Bancroft and Jean Simmons. Next, she played Holly Hunter's daughter in Home for the Holidays, which was directed by another former child star and mentor, Jodie Foster. So was Claire also inspired to make the move into directing? You always hear say, you know, hear actors say, oh, I want to direct. And I, I always laughed because it's just... <laughs> It's enough to act, it's so hard. Um, I wonder if I'll ever get to a point where I'm bored with it. And I don't think that's, I don't think I will. In 1996, she appeared in two box office flops. The straight to video, I love you, I love you not, and to Gillian on her 37th birthday. Incredibly, it was the same year that saw Claire catapulted into Hollywood's A-list, thanks to Baz Luhrmann's wildly successful take on William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. At just 16, she played Juliet alongside Leonardo DiCaprio's Romeo. The pair was so popular that Claire was reportedly the first choice to star with Leo again in the mega-hit Titanic, a rumour she has since denied. After the success of Romeo and Juliet, Claire was in great demand. She chose to move away from her trademark innocent roles to star as a trashy girlfriend in Oliver Stone's U-Turn, followed by a role as an abused wife in Francis Ford Coppola's The Rainmaker with another Hollywood hottie, Matt Damon, and they had plenty of fun on set. I just remember a really funny thing when we were in the hospital, doing the hospital scene, we were just starting to get to know each other. Francis decided to put some, you know, moody music on, but he put, you know, a song of Al Green's on. It was, this, it was the wrong, the wrong sound. It was this waka waka, you know, chick chick waka waka. And uh, it was kind of jarring and we all went, just Matt and I could, we were trying to hold it together and we just started cracking up. We were hysterical. Despite her worldwide fame, Claire has almost managed to keep out of the tabloids. Although she did hit the headlines after making negative comments about the Philippines while filming Broke Down Palace. The comments were so slanderous that the then president publicly condemned Claire and had her banned from the country. Then, after breaking up with longtime musician boyfriend Ben Lee, her choice to date her stage beauty co-star Billy Crudup met with huge disapproval after he left his heavily pregnant girlfriend of seven years, Mary Louise Parker. In a more positive light, Claire received praise for her enrolment at Yale University and her 2009 marriage to Evening co-star Hugh Dancy. So throughout the ups and downs of her career, 
How has she managed to keep grounded and focused on her work? Well, I, I think I was incredibly fortunate. I w was always working on projects that were really exciting and, and clever, and, um, and I was working with people who were brilliant and also kind of sane and, and were sensitive to the fact that I was a child. And, um, and of course, my parents were, were um, you know, were very protective and, and encouraging in the best ways. So, so I think I, I've just thanked the stars, you know, for, for um, having remained kind of balanced and intact. Strongly committed to maintaining a balance between her career and other passions, Claire stepped out of the spotlight to study philosophy at Yale University for two years. But in 2002, she returned to acting, starring in several small but critically acclaimed roles. She played a confused lover in Igby Goes Down and then co-starred with Sean Penn in It's All About Love. But her highlight was starring in the Academy Award winning The Hours alongside her lifelong idol, Meryl Streep, who kindly returned the praise. Little Miss is delicious. She's just wonderful. Wonderful actress. It's almost like a cliche to sort of say that she's your fave, but she is, she is, and she has been for a long time, and so like, it was just like virtually, you know, spiritual experience to see her walk through the room. And it's a little dangerous to meet someone who you admire, have admired so much, you know, from afar. Claire continued to push herself, starring in Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, followed by Stage Beauty, in which she had to appear nude and take on a British accent, which proved both challenging and confronting. We spent about a month working on the accent, which is still a headache um, <laughs> and very anxiety producing, but, um, you know, a welcome challenge, I suppose. The word. Uh, a couple of, of British actresses, but none that I felt had quite her force, her wit, and her intelligence, and her energy. She's extraordinarily attractive because of the, that combination. In 2005, Claire played Sarah Jessica Parker's sister in the dysfunctional family comedy, The Family Stone, after also appearing in Steve Martin's Shop Girl. A brave actress, once again the part demanded a nude scene. Yeah, that's that's caused caused quite a stir. Um, I, it's very demure the nude scene. I um, yeah. So I I people are going to for that reason. I think they might be disappointed, but um, no, it was essential to the story. She had taken her clothes off in Stage Beauty, but I don't think she'd ever done it quite in this. It's a very graphic moment in the film. But it's there for a reason. It's there because her character demands it of that moment. It's, she takes her clothes off because it's, an, it's a gift uh, to, uh, to the other person in the scene in that moment. And it's incredibly true. And it, it's about really being naked. So, you know, and you're going to say, was well, it easy to do? No, it was really hard to do because you're asking someone to not just take their clothes off, but to really be naked. And, and you know, it's not like a glamorous blockbuster movie where you got body doubles or you're all meant to look fantastic and great lighting you know it's just about kind of being naked and actually you know for all of us being really naked is a little bit it's it's uh, exposing and I think that was exposing for Claire and so it wasn't easy. 2007 was a busy year for Claire having already starred in a number of off-Broadway plays she finally made her Broadway debut starring as Eliza Doolittle in Pygmalion. In the same year, she appeared in an eclectic trio of projects, the romantic drama Evening, the thriller The Flock, and the adventure fantasy Stardust, in which she played a celestial star that has fallen from the sky in human form. So did she find the unusual role particularly challenging? I thought my character was so dreamy. I mean, she's a riot, and it's just totally bizarre to, you know, have to render a star, um, but uh, it was definitely a worthy challenge. Claire's Hollywood star continued to rise. In 2008, she appeared in Me and Orson Welles, playing the older woman alongside another young heartthrob, 
Zac Efron. So all us girls want to know, what was it like kissing Zac? <laughs> I, I feel kind of undeserving. I feel very guilty about, about that. Um, but no, I, um, Zac is, is as dreamy as I think people imagine um, up close. Uh, yeah, and, and not only is he obviously kind of gorgeous and charismatic, but he's really very, very talented. Oh, she was so sweet. I was a bit uh, nervous at first, you know, I didn't want to disappoint. She's um, so talented and has done so much, such a, she has such a big body of work. You know, I think Claire's such a wonderful, you know, actress. I've, you know, she's just so talented. I was just, we were lucky to have her, but I think it was fun we commented on that, that she's playing, you know, we still think of Claire Danes as a young actress, but, you know, here she is, you know, playing the older woman. Although she's had the opportunity to kiss some pretty hot actors and work with amazing directors, for Claire, the appeal of acting is a humble one. It's always fun to play heroines, because I get to pretend that I am one. <laughs> because I'm not, in actuality, so. Intelligent, beautiful and talented, through her acting career, Claire Danes has consistently shown us a maturity beyond her years. And after Baz Luhrmann described her as the Meryl Streep of her generation, expect plenty more powerful performances to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.